Welcome to Talk to Brazil, the world's first English language internet radio program about business in Brazil. I'm Tom Riach and your host for the show. I'm talking to you from the city of Campinas in the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil. So when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Today's guest is Stuart Morgan, and Stuart is talking to us from Swansea in Wales in the United Kingdom. Stuart wears many professional hats. Uh, we mentioned several of them, but not all of them. Uh, he's an international management consultant, an executive management trainer, a University of Wales Trinity St. David lecturer in the UK, and also is an affiliate director and facilitator of the EBDA Institute, where he designs, develops, and delivers worldwide C-level selling training programs. This is for international students. It was actually in that role that Stuart and I met in Brazil during a training program. So with that, Stuart, welcome, and thanks for being on Talk to Brazil again. Yeah, it's nice to be in touch with you again, Tom. Um, I'm missing Brazil, and I'd like to come back uh, very soon if that can be arranged. Well, I'd have to say that Brazil misses you as well, uh, because I remember it was several years ago, and after uh, your stay here in your training program, unfortunately, uh, the economy here went in a different direction. But it is my hope and what I see in the future that Brazil is becoming better. There's more international interest. And without a doubt, Brazilians still need the type of training uh, that you offered. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing you here again. I'm looking forward to that very much. Uh, you've been around the world training people uh, in the art of selling to the sea level, right? And today you say you lecture students who someday may become C-level uh, managers of, of, of companies. And when we talk about the C-level in major companies, we're, we're, we're talking about the CEO, CFO, CMO, CNO, CIO, COO, and more recently the CXO, which is a chief experience officer. Uh, but what I'd like uh, you to help our audience understand uh, where is all of this going? Uh, looking forward to the year 2025, what do you see regarding the sea level? Uh, will it be the same? And what do you think is going to change, in your opinion? I, I think things have got to change dramatically, Tom. Uh, what we're seeing with the you know, big tech companies like Facebook, uh, Apple, Google, uh, is that they are innovating like never before. These Big tech companies are leading the uh, fourth revolution. We move into a situation now where artificial intelligence is used every day by everybody with a smartphone. And CEOs, uh, CFOs are going to have to change their approach. Uh, the way they've managed over the last hundred years is no longer fit for purpose. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to people like Gary Hamill, from the London Business School. Uh, he's also associated with many universities in uh, the United States. If you listen to Gary, he's actually saying that the internet revolution is the way that uh, we need to model our businesses for the future. So the internet will be here five, six years from now? Yeah, in 1992, well, when Bill Clinton became president of the United States of America, there were five websites uh, in the whole world. Uh, look at how the situation's changed in uh, less than 30 years. Now, you're right. now everybody's you're right. got their own website. Well, I, I uh, mentioned we, that in, a, in a, uh, an interview that I had uh, actually yesterday uh, in the time frame that when I started my business, you needed to have a website. Today, you need to have an app. Nobody even goes to the websites anymore. Either you have an app and somebody puts it Absolutely. on their smartphone or you're out of business. Absolutely. That's quite correct. And we, we want in information instantaneously. Mm -hmm. We want it now. Right. And uh, uh, everybody's got broadband. Everybody's got 4G, uh, looking to uh, have 5G. Right. They want it quicker and they want it now. Mm -hmm. And uh, my, we were watching television in the house last night. What, what's my, a television, my, Stuart? That you still have those? 
we we've got a smart TV, <laughs> and it's absolutely brilliant because not only can we uh, watch uh, uh, programs on catch-up TV, but on demand, we can download films from Netflix. We can watch YouTube. Uh, as you know, Tom, uh, you've spoken to my wife, and uh, uh, her first language is Russian, mm -hmm. and she likes to watch TV programs uh, from Russia. Right. And uh, with smart TV, she can do that any time of the day or night. Right. And that no, and what you're saying, you you can do it when you want to do it, and where you want to. When do you it. want to do it, uh, not when the TV company wants to broadcast it. Actually, one of the uses of these podcasts that I'm making now. Uh, there are language schools here in Brazil that use the podcast as a training element for their students. Because today I'm talking to you, Swansea, Wales, UK, uh, last week with a, an American woman from Alabama, next week from another woman in Canada. Uh, so it's an opportunity for people to hear English in different ways. Because that's what the world's in about different today. Ways. Yeah. That is what, what the world is about today. Um, and you were talking about learning languages through podcasts. Before we started this podcast, you asked me whether I spoke Welsh. And uh, the <laughs> fact is that my wife and myself are trying to learn Welsh using podcasts. Uh, yeah, because I saw on the so, site that uh, the university where you're lecturing is, I guess, the oldest royal chartered university uh, in Wales. It, in Wales, it is. It's the third oldest in the United Kingdom after Oxford and Cambridge. Wow. So we've got a very long tradition, a very proud tradition. And I saw that the and patron the, is the Royal Highness Prince of Wales. He's the patron of. Does he come around and say hello once in a while? Uh, he, he he has a house very close to one of our campuses. Hmm. And uh, we, we see him every summer. Very good. No, but yeah. that's one thing that I've but, always uh, admired about the the UK, and I've I visited Swansea, uh, is the rich culture. Yes, I know. You told me previously. Uh, yeah, the rich culture that you have, and the, the way that you're able yeah, to preserve well, culture. So. Yeah. Well, 150 years ago, we used to uh, import uh, copper ore from Brazil, uh, <laughs> smelt it here in Swansea, and yeah. then send it uh, out as copper plate all over the world. See. And uh, and the Royal Navy used to put copper plate on the bottom of their uh, uh, galleons and their ships in order to make them go faster. See? And most most of the ore came from Brazil. And the world keeps going round and around and around. It does. And uh, copper is still used a lot in uh, electronic components. Right. And uh, other precious metals. And uh, uh, I, I say the artificial intelligence that is now used in all sorts of ways. Uh, you probably know the, the store uh, Tesco supermarket in the UK. Yes. Well, they're at the leading edge of using artificial intelligence mm -hmm. in order to gather information about stock control, about their uh, customers' buying habits, Mm -hmm. And it's got to the stage now where they're not only gathering the data, but they're using it for predictive purposes, and they're actually shaping the uh, buying behaviors of their right. customers by using artificial yeah. intelligence. Now, how, back, back, back to our, our CEO, how does, this, how does the C-level, how does a CEO keep up with all of this? How does he run his company well, and stay in tune with what's happening? He has, he's either making a well, product or offering a service or doing something, and he has customers all day and all night. And do they sleep anymore? <laughs> That's a very good point, and uh, I've got no information on that. Perhaps we ought to do some research. <laughs> but uh, no, you're right. The role of the CEO is changing. Uh, they've got to become much more facilitative now and, and less autocratic. Their leadership is about making sure that the forward-facing, customer-facing uh, employees are creative, are innovative, and that they have all the facilities at, at hand in order to deliver what the customer wants. So the CEO is now a facilitator rather than an, an authoritarian, dictatorial uh, uh, manager. 
but so he's also the, the, he's also is, the face uh, of the company. You know, it's what you see. He's what the you face get. of the company as far as the investors and the market are concerned. Uh, uh, but as far as the employees are concerned, the CEO's got to put the employees first right. rather than the market first. But he too, uh, if, he isn't, if he isn't tech savvy, he can't convince his own charges to become so. Exactly, exactly. So they're, they're much more savvy, as you say. Uh, they, they've got to become smarter, uh, less managerial, more visionary, and more facilitative. They've got to help people who are fa customer-facing uh, mm -hmm. to be creative and innovative. That's the role of the CEO today. Now to your lecturing and the students that you have at the school, uh, what is the average age of these students and who are they? Are they beginners? What are they? Uh, well, well, today and tomorrow, uh, I'm meeting seven new uh, MBA students who are uh, completing dissertations uh, to finish their MBAs. I've got two Chinese students mm. uh, who are 22 years of age. I've got uh, uh, five Welsh students, one of whom is 40 years of age and is suffering from a life-limiting condition. Mm -hmm. And then the others are about 30 years of age. And uh, uh, they're very creative. They're doing a lot of uh, interesting research, which is actually keeping me on my toes, <laughs> because in order to su supervise them, I've got to know their subject better than they do. Not to teach, you have to learn. So you've got to learn, and that's what I like about the, uh, working at the university, because it keeps me on my toes and makes sure that I keep learning. And we're of a similar age. I won't say how old that is, or young that is, <laughs> but we we survive because we learn, we keep reinventing yeah, ourselves. And that's what CEOs have got yeah. to keep doing now. They've got to reinvent themselves. This fourth industrial revolution is uh, of the future, right. but it's with us now. Right. And uh, the change is uh, uh, taking place very, very fast. No, and, and I see what, uh, what you mentioned, even in the, 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 the age of your students, you said, I'd say if we take the, the average age of being 30 uh, and the, the web internet is only 30 years old, uh, all of your students have only lived with the internet. Uh, but the, the world They've that they're going to find uh, as they move forward, and that's why I'm looking to 2025, the world's going to be full of people like ourselves who are older. Uh, we'll call it older. Well, we'll say vintage. And these upcomings need to know how to deal with us. But this is an expanding market. Uh, and all of the market, and this is worldwide. It is. And, and we're becoming more global. You mentioned right. at the beginning of this podcast uh, that I've worked all over the world. Mm -hmm. I've worked in uh, uh, about 90 countries worldwide. Wow. I've worked in, uh, in dictatorships. I've worked in uh, uh, very democratic countries. Uh, I've worked everywhere. And I've worked in some very culturally chal challenging situations. And if you can't do that as a CEO, uh, as a, a leader of a, a business these days, then you're not going to survive in the future. Well, that's true because the business is not local anymore. Obviously, it is local. You have the supermarket, but a CEO from the local supermarket has to be engaged with the world. And because customers in well, the UK, uh, your region there, you just mentioned, there's people from everywhere. Uh, so our markets aren't as selective as we as they used to be. Yeah, sure. But with that, the, Stuart, uh, I want to I want to thank you. We're coming to the end of our time, <clears throat> and, and as I've always said, I can speak to you, and, and you can help us learn for hours and hours and hours. But I will want to have you back. And as I did mention, thank I want to mention this to oh. our audience, and it's true that I say that a minute of time with Stuart is a year's worth of experience, and that's true. So I, 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 I hope our, our listeners take time to, to listen to this podcast and find you, and they can find you on LinkedIn. That's the best place. <clears throat> and it's linkedin.com uh, slash Stuart Morgan 48. And that's the best way to you, correct? U-A-R-T, Morgan. 
That, that's, that's it. it. That's Thank you, R T. So with that, certainly we'll have you back in the future, and we'll we'll be talking on this subject again. Okay. Thank you very much. And I would also like to invite our listeners and thank all of you for listening today to visit our website, that's talktobrazil.com, and follow the links to the Talk to Brazil business directory, where you'll find a list of competent professional service providers. you also find today's podcast and the connection to Stuart. Uh, today's program was brought to us by Focus MI Marketing Intelligence. Focus MI specializes in market research in the ever-growing agribusiness sector of Brazil. And for more information, their site is focusmi.com. That's F-O-C-U-S-M-I.com. And you can always send your suggestions or comments to me, and that's tom at talktobrazil.com. Or likewise, find me on LinkedIn and their Talk to Brazil LinkedIn group. So remember, when you talk to Tom, you talk to Brazil and the world. Goodbye, and thanks for listening. Thanks for listening to Tom Riach on Talk to Brazil, the business connector to Brazil. 